Hi, my name is Pedro Ferreiro. I am the, Fis I'm the Fisheries Market Director from Sustainable Fisheries Partnership. I'm based in Spain, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the global octopus market as well as uh, uh, the opportunities that sustainability uh, might have for South Southwest Indian Ocean production. So let's start with SFP. There is a non-profit organization that works mostly with uh, corporate uh, uh, so, uh, the companies uh, with the CSR departments, so corporate social responsibility departments, uh, to help them to identify risks uh, and assist them in design and implement uh, measures that can help to reduce uh, those risks identified. Okay. As a nonprofit organization, uh, our mission is to maintain the ocean and aquatic systems health, uh, improving fisheries and agricultural production activities to ensure the future availability of seafood resources. What SFP does is to advise companies in the supply chain and help them to uh, meet their uh, responsible seafood sourcing uh, policy commitments. These uh, commitments widely are based in three pillars. One is uh, certified fisheries uh, like uh, the MSC or other fisheries approved by the GSSI, Global Seafood Sustainability Initiative, uh, or either fisheries that have a sustainability level that is equivalent to MSC. This, this could be a rating system like the Monterey Bay Aquarium, fish source, or a consumer guide like the ones that WWF developed or either fisheries with a public improvement project in place called FIP, Fisher Improvement Project, that will allow them to reach uh, 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 the MSC level in the future. Okay? Uh, and our type of partners are mostly retailers from, from North America and Europe, as well as uh, 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 companies with high reputational risks like Disney or other uh, catering companies like Cisco or food services like US Foods. Uh, we also work with some of their major suppliers in this endeavor, but this is probably the profile of companies in the top end of the supply chain. Now let's uh, review the global octopus market. Okay, this is a snapshot, a, a map that shows the the global seafood trade and as you can see uh, what i what i want to to highlight in this in this slide is that there are three main markets for seafood trade the global scale which are europe asia and north america the total value or worth of the seafood trade at the global scales is uh, 150 billion us dollars for it was in 2018 okay. now Let's review key factors of the octopus uh, market. Okay. The global production, this uh, is data from 2016, but approximately the global production stays around uh, 400,000 tons on a yearly basis. And uh, 280,000 tons are internationally traded, meaning this that 100 and the remaining 120,000 tons are internally consumed in the countries that produce, this, uh, that produce octopus. Okay. The international trade value is 1.8 billion US dollars. And North, Northwest Africa and Southeast Asia are the major producing regions at the global scale. And the species that is driving this market is the common octopus, so octopus vulgaris, uh, in, in, in all forms of trade. Okay. Uh, which are the major uh, producers? Uh, China, of course, uh, a quarter of the global production, approximately. And then is Vietnam, Morocco, Mexico, Japan, Mauritania, South Korea, and India. Uh, but there are other countries that are of a special interest as well that are mm, relevant in terms of production, like Spain, Portugal, Senegal, Indonesia, and Thailand, that are in between 1% and 2% of the global production on a yearly basis. Uh, major exporters at a global scale, Morocco is the major exporter in terms of volume and value. Morocco does not consume octopus and everything is exported. exported. The same happens with Mauritania, which is in the third position. 
uh, and then we also have China in second place, Spain and Vietnam. Um, but uh, when we see the values of the exports, we understand why common octopus, which is the, the species that is produced in, in, in Morocco, is the driver of the market because it's the one that has the that, that, that brings more 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 revenue. Okay. Um, now that we have seen the exporters, let's see who is buying that octopus, the major importers at the global scale. South Korea is the largest importer. Uh, followed by Spain, Italy, Japan, and Portugal. So we have uh, three European countries uh, that are larger importers of uh, octopus at a global scale. But when we see in terms uh, this graph in terms of value, we can see that Spain is again the, the first one, and this is because of the common octopus. This species is the, the, the one that has the highest value in the market and therefore is the driver. Uh, Japan is also a larger importer of, of uh, common octopus, as we will see later. Uh, so, the major markets, uh, the European Union, where is sourcing the, the, the European countries? Where is the octopus coming from? So, mostly from Morocco, Mauritania, Senegal, and a bit of from Indonesia, which is something that is interesting for this presentation because they are also producing the octopus cyanina, the same species that is being produced in the Southwest Indian Ocean. And some is also uh, being imported from Mexico. The value, as you can see, is the largest value, which over approximately the half of the international trade is being. Uh, uh, exported to the European Union. Um, the second largest market is uh, East Asia countries, Japan and South Korea. Uh, and they are mostly importing from China, Vietnam and Thailand, especially South Korea and Morocco, Mauritania, Japan. Okay, this is, um, um, these two markets are also really relevant in terms of, of value with uh, over 600 million US dollars in, in imports on a yearly basis. Uh, third largest market, uh, the North America, and is dominated by the US, which is mostly importing from Spain and Portugal. And this is again relevant because, uh, because we will need to, we need to keep these two countries in our mind uh, for the next slides. Uh, the, sec the, the fourth largest uh, market will be Southeast Asia, that is really low in comparison with the other three, and it will be followed by China and, and, uh, uh, and, and Hong Kong. Uh, so the, um, this is uh, a graph that shows that China is producing a lot, but it's not importing that much of octopus. Okay. Um, Let's now review which are the sustainability initiatives that are in place right now uh, that can meet the demands of the markets where sustainability matters. Okay. Right now, there are just two fisheries that are MNC certified, uh, which are the Western Asturias Octopus Trap Fishery which is um, a really, really tiny fishery here in the northwest of Spain uh, that only has an average production of 70 to 80 tons a year, just 70 to 80 tons. Uh, the other uh, fishery that is uh, certified under the MSC scheme is the Western Australia Australian Octopus Fishery. And it, it is also a really small production, 189 uh, tons. Uh, so there is a huge potential in the market to meet uh, the demands from the retailers or the supply chain companies that are seeking uh, octopus production with this uh, certification. Uh, other improvement initiatives, fishery improvement projects, it was one of the other conditions that we saw before that most of the retailers uh, having their sustainability sourcing policies. Uh, uh, so FIPS, at a global scale right now, there are six octopus FIPS, and the majority of them are also uh, low volume. 
the only big volume uh, FIP is the Mexica, Mexico Yucatan Octopus Rift and uh, Gold Line uh, Octopus, which has uh, approximately production of 10,000 tons on a yearly basis. Uh, we also have Chilean initiative in the south of Chile, in Japan, uh, another Mexican FIP in the Bahia de Los Angeles, in the Pacific uh, side of the, of the country, uh, a Chinese FIP, and one in Madagascar, that is also part of the Southwest Indian Ocean uh, uh, project. Okay. But all these uh, uh, FIPs together, they just represent over 12,000 tons of production that could be considered as responsible and therefore getting the green light from uh, major buyers in developed countries like on developing countries like the US or European Union uh, to get access to these uh, to these markets. Now I would like to to present uh, the global octopus supply chain roundtable which is a forum for processors, importers, and other octopus buyers that work together in a pre-competitive environment to achieve improvements in fisheries of interest. Right now, this is an initiative that SFP has started. And right now we have 16 companies that belong to this group from US, Spain, and Portugal. And there is also one Italian company. Uh, and these companies are financially investing in fisheries uh, of their interest to support improvement initiatives. Uh, they have uh, four priority origins right now, which are Mexico, where the FIP was launched in 2018, as we saw before, uh, in the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, in Morocco, this group has also financed an MSC pre-assessment and a FIP work plan in order to support the national industry and the national stakeholders to establish an FIP, and is in close conversation with the government from Morocco to start uh, to launch an FIP on the fishery there. Uh, they have also support uh, Mauritania, but Mauritania uh, is right now on a political crisis and the situation is in standby, as well as because of the COVID that has impacted all the fisheries. Uh, but they have uh, also invested in that fishery. And the next step is going into Senegal to do a bit of a scoping of, uh, of the interest there, because we already know that there is some interest and some of the members of this group are also sourcing from that country. And therefore, a, a similar approach that in Morocco is going to be used by developing an MSC pre-assessment or supporting others that are in the way of developing MSC pre-assessments and uh, moving forward with, uh, with a work plan to launch an efficient improvement project there. Uh, yeah, let's now review the opportunities that Southwest Indian Ocean production have. Okay. The major uh, export markets where the production from the Southwest Indian Ocean is going are Portugal, Italy, France, China, and Greece. So four out of five are from the EU. So the EU is a key market for Southwest Indian Ocean. Uh, let's now review uh, what's the reality of the imports from the EU. Okay, the EU is mostly is importing uh, a billion euros. So that's the data from 2018, uh, and it represents uh, over. 100,000 tons of, of octopus. 99% was frozen, and Morocco and Mauritania represent 60% of the value and 51% of the volume. So are the key uh, uh, producing countries that are feeding the European markets. Other markets that are also of relevance, Mexico, Senegal, and Indonesia, which represent 20% in value and 27% in volume. Uh, and in, in within the European market, Spain is the main importer. More than the half of the imports are going to Spain. Uh, and it's followed by Italy, uh, which uh, is also a large importer and especially in, of interest for octopus cyanide. Mm. But Europe not only imports, it also imports, process and exports. Uh, what is uh, being uh, processing in the Europe in the European uh, region? So the exports of the European 
countries uh, reached 145 million and represent 12 over uh, over 12,000 tons in in 2018. And frozen is the most uh, traded uh, way of uh, for octopus and 13% prepared and 4% smoked. And again, Spain is the main exporter with 79% of the exports. Uh, and the main market is the United States, okay, that represents over 50% of the exports. So as you can see, there is a clear connection between Europe and the US both markets that have uh, uh, strong commitments with the seafood sustainability. Let's review now the kind of engagement we are, uh, we are discussing here uh, in terms of what is the, the reality of the engagement of these markets. This is a graph that represents uh, the top 10 European retailers. And as you can see, 86% of them have a sustainability commitment, either through working with an NGO partner like us, or others like WWF, uh, or they have their own uh, independent sustainability commitments that are always related with certifications or improvement initiatives like FIPS. So, so 86% of the sales that go through the retailer channel in the European Union are, co are through companies that have sustainability commitments that are going to be either MSc or certification, GSSI certification, or uh, improvement initiatives like FIPS. Uh, yeah, let's review now what is happening with the U.S. because Europe is also exporting to the U.S. In the U.S., the situation is even uh, uh, even the situation is uh, the sustainable seafood movement has even ha has had a higher impact, uh, and ninety percent of the total sales out of the twenty five North American retailers are through companies that have uh, sustainability commitments and working actively on improving their uh, seafood sourcing. So this just, these two slides just uh, give us an idea on how difficult it will be to enter into these supply chains if your product is not, it has not a sustainability uh, attribute, either being certified or with an improvement initiative in place. Okay. But this has not only reached retailers, this movement has is been spanned to other sectors. Uh, so, for the ten uh, global food distributors, uh, Cisco and US Foods, they are the the largest and and, and they represent sixty percent out of the ten major uh, global food distributors. And both have sustainability commitments. In this case, both work with us with SRP. Um, if we see what is happening with catering companies in North America, same. So major players are starting to embrace sustainability and introducing sustainability commitments into their civil sustain sourcing policies. Uh, so certain European countries like Spain, Italy and Portugal, and especially Spain, are the best gateway to markets that demand sustainable products for Southwest Indian Ocean production. But this uh, production need to count with the sustainability attribute that we have seen, otherwise will not meet the requirements of, the, of these markets, of the European market and also to the, to the North American market where most of the Spanish uh, process production is, going, is being exported. So that is uh, probably the, the, takeaway of, of the takeaway of this presentation. Uh, if, Southwest is, if Southwest Indian Ocean production uh, moves into the sustainability uh, world by either by getting a certification or moving into a fishery improvement project, they should be thinking on reaching Spain, Italy, or Portugal in order to succeed. So thank you for attending to this presentation. I'm willing to hear all your comments and questions in the Q&A session. And I really believe that working together, we can make a change in the global octopus production.